Today I want to talk about something that I have survived twice. And I feel if you can help someone with your life, if you've survived an illness, a tragedy, and you have the strength to discuss it, I think it's our duty. And for me, it's breast cancer. I survived it two times. So if you are going through this or you know someone that is, even if neither one applies to you, maybe it's something that you want to watch just to keep you informed on some of the signs of breast cancer. Nevertheless, here we go. Thank you. Find something you cannot afford to pay for. Tap into it. I am Tammy C. Walker, life coach, therapist, social worker, and two-time breast cancer survivor. This video is about my survival story of breast cancer. I am now 48 years old, almost 49, and feeling mighty fine. But it's been a journey getting here. At age 36, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and a very aggressive one. So I think my diagnosis was something like stage 2.B. I have always had a very small chest. So um, having that lump in my breast, it came out of the blue. And I think because of having a smaller, you know, the smaller breast area, it made it more noticeable, noticeable for me. I'm just going to say that. So back in 01 my late mother was diagnosed with breast cancer for her she had radiation and a lumpectomy and she was doing good after that but it made us aware my sisters and i of breast cancer before my mother was diagnosed i knew of some people who women who've had it breast cancer but cancer i did know of others and you know when you hear cancer is scary and you think death and you just think people die. But the truth of the matter is more and more and more people are surviving cancer. And you hear it more frequently that someone has had it, but you also hear that they beat it. And it's always heartbreaking to the ones that lose the fight with cancer. Do they really lose? Because these people are fighting. So um, I think the great Stuart Scott said, because somebody passes away from cancer, it doesn't mean they lost. You judge them by how they lived. And I just thought that was so powerful. If you don't know Stuart Scott, he passed away from cancer a few years ago. He was a sports commentator, but he had a long standing career in sports. And he was only in his late 40s, if I'm not mistaken. But my um, battle began again when I was 36 years old. Because of my mom's previous illness, it made me do the self breast exams. So if you can do them when you're in the shower or also do them when you're laying on the bed and you want to um, massage the breast area and try to feel for lumps, look for discharges, anything that feels abnormal. Even if you kind of feel something and you're like, oh, it's nothing, it's better to be safe than sorry. Just go and have it examine, especially if you're, it doesn't matter your age, because if you're in your 20s and 30s, this still could happen because I was 36. But if you are 40, get your mammogram each year. Please do not go on the side of fear. If some women I know, they say, I'm scared to go. I'm scared of what they're going to tell me. Be scared of not going. If they find it quick and early, you have a high, high, high percentage of surviving. It's when you wait and ignore and it starts jumping around, spreading, that's when you have more problems. So believe it or not, it's better to go early than late. So I don't want you to be scared. Be bold, brave, and take care of your body. I'm an example that early detection saves lives. So again, I was 36 years old. I felt the lump. I went to, I called Northwestern Hospital. I'm in Chicago, outside of Chicago. So that's the hospital my mom was treated for, for breast cancer and leukemia. So by this point, it's 2007. And when I told them about my mom's history, my late grandmother passed away at the age 28 from 
either ovarian or uterine cancer. This was in the 50s where things were a lot less undetectable. And the 50s, I mean, it just was a time when, you know, technology was nothing like it is now. And my grandmother was from Mississippi. So the chances of an African-American woman getting good treatment for uterine or ovarian cancer, that's hard to detect. You already know that was a tough story. So um, because of my mom's history and my grandmother's history, when Northwestern Hospital heard about me, they made me come in right away. They sound very alarmed. So I went for the exam and biopsy, and I went the Friday before Memorial Day 2007. I have to be honest with you, I did not think I had breast cancer, not even like 2% or 5%. Maybe I didn't want to let my mind go there, or I was trying to be super positive, but it really didn't cross my mind. I just didn't go there. I was like, go get the biopsy. It's going to be nothing. That's the end of that. Even the doctor said, oh, you're young. You're in great shape. It's probably a fibristic cyst. So that's what I was leaning on. I go to work that Tuesday after Memorial Day, and I kind of told my manager, you know, I was having some health things going on. So he was kind of aware. Next thing you know, my phone rings with a 312 number, which I knew was the hospital. And the doctor said it in a monotone, cold voice. Yes, this is Dr. Blank. Yes, you do have cancer. Please jot down these numbers and please call these numbers right away. And I'm looking at the phone like, what the just happened to me? And when I was told that, it's like I jumped and my eye, it twitched for two weeks. That's how shocking it was. I just remember leaving my job, you know, I emailed my manager, so I have an emergency about my health. I got to go get in the car, call one of my dear friends, and I'm just crying. I think that was who I called. I'm getting it mixed up maybe when my dad passed. Nevertheless, I called somebody crying, and I could not pull it together. I could not conceptualize what was told to me. This lasts for about two weeks where I was just like crying, like in denial, like, oh my God. I didn't feel like I was going to die. I just was scared. Like, what is this cancer? Why me? Who do you nominate if you don't say yourself? Who would you rather have it? So sometimes I try not to even say, why me? It's like, why not me? Who, who, who would you suggest? So it could happen to any of us. So once the shock wore off, I was on this quest to be positive anyway, prior to that, like summer 2006 and all of 07. So by this point, it's May 07, almost June, and I'm still on my positive quest. I was not going to let breast cancer get me. So once I get to Northwestern and they see my breast and how aggressive it was, I had an oncologist, radiologist, regular surgeon, plastic surgeon, and a fertility doctor. Because of chemotherapy, it can destroy the female reproductive system. So they wanted me to preserve eggs just in case I wanted to have kids. At this point, I'm 36, so, you know, it's really time. I was not in a relationship to preserve those eggs. You needed sperm. Who was I going to, like, go ask some random guy or ex-boyfriend? No. So after I spoke to my oncologist, I did ask her, what would you do? She said, Tammy, your cancer is aggressive. We need to fight it. You kind of can't worry about having babies if you're not here. All bets off. Let's go. Chemotherapy. So I ended up forfeiting the fertility thing because it I would have had to have waited for my menstrual cycle. It would have been more weeks. And I'm like, this thing is growing. And it's no lie, it was growing fast because I ended up touch, you know how you touch your breast and it was numb. It was like the cancer invaded the breast where it made it numb, no feeling. So that scared me real bad. And I ended up with three forms of chemotherapy. So I did that for three, I think four times maybe, or three times, I don't remember. But I would get the chemotherapy, it would take three hours and I had three medicines, very, very, very strong. And I will have to wait three weeks for my cells to recover and get another three hours of chemo. It's the most, I don't even have a word. It's just poison being basically put in your body. 
but to kill something that you don't want in your body. A lot of people are against chemotherapy. I don't, I'm against some medication, and I'm not a big pump a bunch of medicine in me. I'm more holistic, to be honest with you. But God, I, I have to say God because I'm here. He told me, you know, it's okay. Get this. If this is going to save your life, get it. So I want to tell people, don't be uneducated. Do your research. Talk to survivors. If that chemotherapy is going to help you, go and get it. Do your holistic thing too. And if you get the chemotherapy, some people don't even know what chemotherapy is. They take a needle and put it in your veins. It's a bag of medicine hanging up. Intravenously, this medicine is going all throughout your body and killing good cells as well as bad cells. Some people get it for hours, some two, some three, some elect to take a pill. I heard the pill is as good as the liquid medicine. This is 07. Now we're in 2019, 12 years. So things are advancing fast and things are changing. Maybe the pill is the same as the medicine. I'm not a doctor. I'm just telling you what I did. So anyway, after all the chemo, my chemotherapy is the, the proper word was chemo for short. My doctor said, Tammy, I want to warn you, your hair will fall out. As you see, I wear short hair. I've been wearing short hair now 20 something years. Love it. Love it. It's just my style. Um, but I didn't want to have no hair. So it was hard to hear. And I had someone say, it's just hair. Now, the person that said that, let me see you shave your head. You know, don't. Please don't tell any cancer survivors or anyone fighting cancer that they shouldn't worry about losing their hair. That's mean. We like our hair, whether it's two inches or 20 inches, but you have to prioritize. And that's why they make wigs. So I got a wig before my hair fell out. So it did help me. After the chemotherapy, my first batch of chemotherapy, I had surgery. I thought once they do the chemotherapy, they can do a lumpectomy and remove the cancer. My lump was so huge that it had to be cut out. So I had to have a mastectomy and a reconstruction. So thank God for modern technology, beautiful surgeons. They can restore anything to a good look. So I don't want you to be scared over that. And they'll give you implants as well. So there's so many options. So I want you to stay hopeful and try not to freak out because that's the key. Stay relaxed and listen to what the doctors say. If at any time you feel weird or like, I don't like this doctor, this is not feeling right, get a second opinion or switch hospitals. Do not be scared. You have to be an advocate for your own health. Health. After the chemotherapy and the surgery, which the surgery was kind of radical because they removed lymph nodes. Let's see. I was trying to see if you could see. I'm sorry for showing my underarm. Here's the incision. I don't even know if you can see that. Um, but I did not have cancer in my lymph nodes. So that's why they do that. Um, it's radical because I couldn't drive for about six to eight weeks because a mastectomy is pulling your breasts, it's, it's pulling your tissue here, and it affects your underarm. So it's a big deal. But it worked because I'm still here. And thank God for it. So after the surgery, I had radiation. Radiation is done quickly, probably five minutes, because it's so intense. It's a beam that comes from the ceiling, or like, you know, yeah, like the ceiling, and it radiates that area. And they only could do it for a few minutes because it'll burn you. Towards the end, I did have my back was burned. That shows you how intense this is. But it worked. So I want to tell you all of this because I survived. I don't want anyone to say, I'm not getting radiation. I'm not getting chemo. And if it could save your life, I want you to get it. I want you to live. Fight to live. So God forbid you do get a diagnosis like I had. Just know that you can survive. And I have to be honest, I had to go through this again in 2013. It came back less severe. It was in the other breast, and they did a lumpectomy where they did remove the cancer. And they did chemo again and radiation. Lost my hair again, but I'm still here. So that's my message. Don't freak out and say, I'm going to die. Fight to live. 
do your homework, get the books. Don't look at the internet, it will scare you. But you do your homework, look at the books, and do your holistic drinking, your juices, fresh juices, and a lot of water if you have to have chemo. And if you do have chemo, still try to exercise, walking, anything you can do to keep the blood going, that will help you. I'm going to have to do more videos on this because there's so much to talk about. And I better cut this off because I don't want to, not even bore you, just overdo it. So again, hit subscribe, hit like if you want to see more content. Drop me comments if you're a survivor. My survivors, I want to hear from you. And um, any comments you want to leave, any questions, I'm going to leave my email in there. I will respond back. It may take a little while, not too long, pretty quick usually. But if I can help encourage someone that's going through this or answer a question or concern, I will be more than happy to help you. So again... Tammy C. Walker, Life Coach Therapist, Social Worker. You are a survivor. Thank you for watching.